evening, guys. Well, I've got a little treat for you today. I shipped out the last build I had on my desk yesterday, and it occurred to me that is the first time in probably three or four months that I have not had a build on my desk. Freeze up a little time. My daughter has a huge sleepover this weekend. I mean huge. And we decided to do just a little bit of remodeling. So I got everything straight from taking a look. What you see here is the VR corner. I finally got everything set the way I want it. I got two VR uh, Oculus sensors up top. I'm running another one um, over the wall and mounted to the back over here so I can have a 360 degree output. In the corner over there, we have the uh, racing simulator with the PC, blah, blah, blah. We've already been down this road. But what occurred to me, hey, I've got a little bit of time. I want to tackle a project that I've thought about for a long time. And I know I've been asked about it quite a few times as well. And not only am I going to do this for you, I'm going to set everything up. I'm going to upload it. And you can download the entire package as it sits and you can have your digital movie poster streaming over 2,000 movie posters and trailers and tickets and everything else within literally minutes. I've done all the work for you. Now what you are gonna need, you're gonna need a TV, preferably a flat screen, a cheap HDMI or DVI output from a computer, any kind of computer will work, single core, dual core, as long as it uh, is small enough to fit in your shadow box if you decide to put a shadow box up. You need to create a shadow box again if you want to put one up. And that's about it. So it's just a TV, a cheap computer, an HDMI cable, and my download. Now this is going to be a three-part tutorial. Tonight I'm going to go ahead and cover how to download, install, set up. And I'm going to cover some of the basics of managing your new digital movie poster. Now, what gave me the idea is <clears throat> we got these posters a long time ago. Now, the posters are actually a little bit expensive, maybe $25, $30. Bucks. The frame's no more than $10. We didn't want to invest too much simply because of the kids. Now, but since the kids are older now, I want to get rid of these and replace them with digital posters. As well as, I want to replace this with a lit uh, theater screen, which you can make on your own. Uh, I'll keep that the way it is. So let me tell you, I started on this today. The first part and actually the second part of the tutorial has already been recorded so I, I found this insignia 40 inch LED TV on Facebook marketplace for $40 I ran over instantly and picked it up I took this compute stick this is an Intel second generation compute stick now my testing actually was on a first generation and it died on me. So I brought the TV up here, set up that compute stick, and I moved this table right over here where you guys can see it. And as I was uh, getting running the cables, what happened so that's our new 40 inch LED TV it looks like a uh, abstract uh, Commodore 64 loading or something I got it so cheap it really doesn't matter it's more of a pride thing like damn I really let that happen but it's not going to deter us because I took this is my Amazon TV this is an older 32 inch I didn't want one that small but did get the, as you can see, I've got the, the posters loaded. Now, since this machine that it's loaded on is lacking some DirectX features, 
we're not getting the full detail of the of the um, software but we're going to dig in i'm going to show you how to take advantage of everything it has to offer not only that just download and go if you have a tv laying around if you have a cheap pc then you are really good to go another thing you could add to is i think what i'm going to do see that that was a 360 degree it'll rotate horizontal and vertical and it allows me to add the led glow that i'm gonna add so i'll go over that here shortly but guys if you've ever wanted to build your own digital video poster i've got you covered this is part one good morning everybody well i tell you what it's been setback after setback after setback but i am determined to get this part one out and it's the most important part because basically it's the heart and soul of everything now i've configured everything that you need to create your own digital movie frame it will uh, go out and pull as many movie posters as you want any predefined movie posters you want trivia files motion uh, motion frames basically it's just the same thing as uh, video files and it will always just change now you can have as many of these as you want but you'll need two things you'll need a flat screen TV uh, I hope you can't fit this in a, a CRT or maybe a big screen school rear projection you came out your wall. Uh, you'll need a flat screen TV and a cheap, very inexpensive, small or long HDMI cable. The PC does not have to be powerful at all. At all. Uh, the first, as I was building and prototyping everything just to make sure it worked before I started building my shadow box, I was using the very first generation Intel compute stick. Now that was a very slow dual core uh, machine, but it did everything it just needed it to do. Uh, when the brand new, well, to me it was, and one hell of a deal, TV fell about two hours ago, and my T fell on top of it, so it fell off the stand broke on the floor, T, hit it, compute stick's going. So what is over here now is the Intel compute stick, the latest generation, which my wife and kids use for media center. I personally don't uh, don't like the new generation. It's very, for some reason, it's very bogged down. But I cannot get all the features to run that I could get on the first generation, but it doesn't matter. What I am out to find a new TV. That is a 32 inch there. I just want some bigger. I've got, I got a 32 there, I got a 32 here. There's a 45 over there. I would like to be in that 40 to 43 range. So, what I am about to go buy here in a minute is this mini forum, famous mini PC. It's just a standard. Um, It's just a fanless, is it a quad core? It looks like it's a dual core, 32 gigs. It's, it's a good deal, I'm getting it for $80. So, with the, uh, it's got HDMI, VGA, and I've got USB 3, which I can put um, USB to VGA, uh, to HDMI. With that, I might be able to run the entire room if I've got all three TVs, but today we're gonna focus on one. <laughs> so, if this is something you wanna do, Need a PC and an HDMI cable and a flat screen TV. Now I'll tell you, I've got several, several deals lined up for replacement of the 40 inch TV for no more than 50 bucks. And that's for a, I've got a 40, no, I've got a 38 lined up and a 40 lined up. And that one's 100 bucks, but the $40 one yesterday, that was a steal. 
So for about $100, you can do this all on your own if you have a PC laying around. About $150, you're still way under budget. Once you get um, your PC up and running, you download the software that I've packaged for you. If you want to build a shadow box, we're going to cover that tomorrow. Here's the beginnings of my shadow box. Now, this shadow box depended upon the 40 inch TV. It was um, 30 inch, 36 inches on both sides and 22 on the width. And hopefully, I can get a, 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 um, a TV today that'll, that'll match those settings. But I planned on doing, I was going, as you can see, I used uh, standard black gloss paint and I'm going to flex a dip over that to get the smooth finish that we can uh, that way you can wash your I mean wash you can wipe down your your frame without ever having to get splinters and it'll have a smooth look to it now, depending Good upon oops, depending upon the how well everything goes today our end result will look exactly like that so we've got the TV mounted inside of the shadow box with CD Glow back there. I got a fresh box of LEDs to go just like I saw. I was so close to this. But all right, let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is download the, the zip file. You'll find the link down below. I packaged that zip file with roughly couple hundred uh, movie posters just in case you do not want to uh, keep your machine online or it doesn't have internet access you want to be able to uh, dynamically change your your movie posters so wherever you download your zip file just unzip it it does not need to be installed however wherever you install it that's where it needs to stay so the very first time you run movie poster you need to make sure that that's where you're going to leave the files. So I would just move this to your documents or a temp drive or whatever. So after you unzip everything, you're going to see a posters. Yeah, this is where all your the posters I've put together for you. You also have a trivia, uh, just to show you how the trivia works. And we are missing out during the cash trip. So to get started, Take note of this remote control here. We are going to launch Movie Poster. That's all you got to do. Movie Poster. I've set just about everything for you. We are not now. Let me start off saying Movie Poster is not free, but it's only ten dollars. It's only ten dollars to register. You don't have to register. It'll it'll still display and, and work just fine. But we are going to register. One thing I don't like about his registration process is. It has to be registered on the machine that you plan on running it from. So let's say if I if I test it on the compute stick, if I were register registered that today, I would have go had to go buy another license today. Um, it's only ten dollars, and let me tell you, this is the most feature rich software that actually does the job with no bugs that I've encountered. So we're just gonna go ahead and click X. Now, I've left my movie frame, the the poster, out of uh, full screen view. Now, if I wanted to throw it in full screen, I would maximize it just like that. If you go to settings, right click, go to settings, under appearance, this is where you would set. This will be displayed on the top, but I believe it. You know what? That's fine. If you have your logo that you would like to set, you would set the logo here. And so, if I go to Great Dane Cinema, hit set. I'm gonna hit save. It's gonna reboot, but now the top of every movie poster will have your logo. Now, I don't want that. I have it to um, 
fade in and out. That way it doesn't, uh, you don't encounter burn in. Now right now we're doing this from the Windows front end, but I'm gonna show you a really awesome uh, back end. But there's, uh, one has a lot more features than the other. So I'm gonna go to display, my appearance, and I'm gonna remove. We're gonna go back to settings. Go to display options. Now, right now I have all of the transitions turned on. Depending upon the, the speed of your machine, it's probably best to just pick a couple of your favorites, maybe cloud, fade, nothing too crazy. Just pick whatever, maybe pixelate, there you go. Now, if you want your, if you want movie motion posters to, to show up on your screen here, we'll find motion posters look just like this. This is pretty cool. sends um, a movie poster to a whole another level. Now there's a whole bunch of these and I've got about 50 of them so far. Now if you want those to be displayed randomly, you are gonna check the show motion poster if available. You want to make sure the cycle uh, theater banner to avoid burn, that's where what we covered earlier to where you can put your logo. But whenever a movie is loading or is uh, showing, that will override. So if it's, let's say if you've set a movie to showtime, what means this movie is playing right now, it will show up on the movie poster instead of your logo, which is sort of what it's supposed to do. Whenever you hit a movie as now playing, that means that uh, dim screen for now playing means if you hit it for now playing, which we're going to cover later, the movie posters will uh, fade down a bit, that they won't be so bright, which is a really good idea. Uh, sources, now I've already set all the databases, I've set the external uh, playlist. If you want to, uh, Redbox is no longer up and running. Uh, if you have Couch Potato running, which I believe is a XBMC plugin, you would uh, set that here. Everything, uh, you can leave all this alone uh, or play with it if you want. Basically, I've got uh, the movie database pulling most popular, um, up and coming, now playing, and top rated. And I've got those set to three. Uh, three sets the, the value higher where it pulls um, more posters each time. It's probably best to set it down a little bit, but I'm on a really fast connection. We go to other posters. This is your, this is the static library of posters that I've uploaded. Now, if you download any other posters, you wanna go ahead and uh, just stick them in this directory and they'll start pulling them. If you are a member of uh, Cinema Vision, then you can go ahead and download your trivia slides and your game slots here by clicking that. Trivia Vision is basically the a site that tries to recreate that movie experience. So whenever you're sitting there waiting on, um, you know, movie to to load or to play, you'll see trivia facts, you'll see trailers, you'll see all the cool things that you go to movies for right there in your home. That's what Cinema Vision plugin does. Next, the filters. Uh, this basically tells movie poster what categories we want to pull movie posters from. Now, I've already set most of these to age-appropriate and age-friendly, I mean, uh, kid-friendly, 
movies. The only thing we don't have, we don't have erotic, and every movie nowadays is, is rated R, so it's kind of hard to set uh, what we want. Now, autoplay trailers. Now, down here at the bottom, we see that movie poster is displaying uh, posters. However, it will actually fill up a gap down there at the bottom and start playing trailers if it downloads the trailers. It does a really great job of uh, re-rendering the, the poster and then having a pretty little video down at the bottom showing you the trailer for that movie. Now, uh, the autoplay just tells it, hey, um, after the poster loads, start with the uh, trailer if it's available. You can set your preferred uh, streaming uh, quality for the poster, I mean the, the trailer. So this means that you've downloaded, you prefer to download a 700, I mean 720p uh, trailer. It's going to stream the quality at uh, 360. Basically it's to save bandwidth and to save on the transitions of the next poster. You're not slowing anything down. However, if you've got a really beefy machine, you can go ahead and bump all that up. Monitor control doesn't really um, apply to you since you have a modem. <laughs> I can see here it's, it's trying to communicate with a, a modem, probably a non-modem. But you do have event ghost settings, and there is an event ghost uh, plugin that you can download, and it's a scripting language that you can um, attach certain uh, events to. IR control lets you set the motion controller if you have it. Um, the creator of this created a device where basically it turns everything on the second you enter the room. It's called the motion controller. And it, it can do a whole lot, and you'll find it on this website, which we're going to visit here in a minute. <coughs> cache management. If you prefer to um, move the cache somewhere else, basically, every time it downloads a folder, it's going to save it. It's going to save the metadata, and this allows us to um, not have to call home or, or go scrape movies, movie posters. Now, remote, the web server uh, port, this is our remote control. Now, what this allows us to do is we can control it from our phone. We can control it from our web browser, which I'm obviously going to do here in just a second. And I don't know this IP address. I'll cover that in a minute. But it's got a gorgeous and very user-friendly Apple and Android um, user interface for the phone and desktop. The about whenever you purchase your your license, which I would, it's still right there. It's a ten dollar donation. Uh, you'll get a, this is where you enter the registration code. Now, um, obviously, you want to run movie poster on Windows Startup. To open web remote, and we go ahead and save. That's going to reboot everything. Here's our poster, and here's our remote. Now, the first thing that you can do is you can come and open. Oh, I'll tell you what, let's do this. Let's move this over here. Now, the first thing that you, you can do is you can modify and go out and look for for trailers if you want. I mean, for um, posters. And the way you do that is you head to. I know this is exactly what you want to go to first. Is give me more posters. If we go to, if I'm not mistaken, we're going to go to cash. Search. Now we got an ant poster, and I don't know. Let's do Greece. Just search. So now it's pulling us all the Greece posters that it found, and we're going to go ahead and add. So now it's been added to cache. 
but add grease too as well. So you can import uh, your game, TV, and uh, movies. This is where you handle everything if you want to add movie posters to your list. existing uh, files that it's pulled from cache. If you want to move anything to the blacklist, just simply check it. For example, Control all this. 
filters, every single thing that you uh, controlled from the front end. So, right click settings. Right, this is the same thing. Now, if I want to, if you want to, uh, you're going to mount your TV vertically. You can rotate. I don't know if you can rotate if you need rotate it like this. Settings, displays, and you got it. Normally it's going to display just like this. And that's um, horizontal. We're going to set this to uh, portrait. Now we're going to set to start maximized. Save. And now your new movie poster is up and running. Alright, let's say you've got a machine that you do not plan to have online or it will not be online and or you just don't want a a service consistently um, downloading images, movies, whatever, and you need a place to download HD movie posters. Well you want to head over to the I. It is a public FTP repository. It's not an FTP, but it is a independent, not-for-profit scraper. That's all these guys do is uh, scrape data for who knows what. The eye is a really great resource for a lot of things. But today you are going to head over to the eye public and posters imports.com folder. Select the year. Now what you're looking at is, if you see the small sizes here, usually they're not good quality. See that it's good, but it's small. What you want to look for is the XLG, that is usually the HD long. See that's perfect. Now if you see an XXLG, usually that is the vertical version. Ooh. So you can just scroll through here and find the ones that you want. Kentucky Fried Movie. Mm -hmm. Not very good appropriate, but Pete's Dragon. Now personally, <clears throat> I like the the images with the, the folds in it. Like this example, this here's a scan, and you can see the fold in that scan. I like that. That gives it some character and makes it look like it's a real piece of um, you know, a real piece of paper in there. Now, if Pete's Dragon is here, didn't Popeye come out the same year? I guess not. Definitely not in '77. So anyway, you scour through, download the ones that you want, make sure you put them in the, in the posters folder. Also, if you want to scrape the entire thing, here's your wget command line right there. If you want to learn more about wget, you can find more information right i.eu uh oh and usually um, there's a link down the bottom that will show you um, how to use wget 
how to install WGIT for various platforms. But once you have everything installed, you just copy the command line that's at the bottom of the, the link right there. Copy. And this will allow you to scrape that entire uh, directory. And you don't want to go too crazy because they have petabytes of space and you probably don't. So, here's your wget guide right there. Then you get noobs. I, if I'm mistaken, noobs usually hits the uh, Linux version. Yeah. So that's the command line version. There is uh, quite a few GUIs out there for people who've never used WGIT, but head over to the I and download your folders if you don't want them in there. In the meantime, I am going to go, probably going to go eat breakfast, and then I'm going to start. Finding a new monitor, one that actually works and is in one piece, and then I want to mount it in the shadow box. After that gets mounted, we're going to upload uh, part two, and then the final version will be part three. I did just go meet the guy before he went to work and picked up a minis forum, fanless mini PC. Now, um, the version that he showed me online uh, is not the version that I got. Uh, this only has one HDMI, two HDMI, two dotos, one three doto, uh, SD. But he wasn't very uh, tech aware, so uh, I forgive him. He was a Christian guy too. All right, so now just download the link below, play around with uh, movie poster. When you get done, you want to head over to movieposterapp.com. And if you want to support and get rid of the nag screen, or better yet, just uh, support his development. It is a final product, and it's very well worth the, the $10, guys, 10 bucks. And you'll find a couple extra goodies over here too. Yeah, under, if I'm not mistaken, they're under uh, support maybe? No, they're under uh, more. So here are your um, motion posters. And you can download them here. Let's just take a look at, let's look at Ted. Now, obviously, you can determine whether your poster is going to have sound or not. But, um, I love the Puss in Boots one. Oh, you can see that one. Oh, it's up there. Very cool. Just think you'll have that on your wall next to uh, your your family theater. All right. So the demo link is below. Uh, comment. Let me know if you have any problems, and uh, we'll see you later, guys.